Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about meaning, purpose, guidance, explaining the unknown, inco incomprehensible, or origins, the end, the terminus, unfairness, stress, survival, success, motivation, morals, goals, aspirations. Things are indelible, cannot be disproven. Faith, control, corral, convince, and command. All those things relate to God. We're going to hit the big one. Let's enjoy this one. Join us. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes because we're going to fondle your follicles. That intro is so beautiful. No matter how many times I hear it, it's good, folks. It's ethereal. Well, I'm Nick. We all know I got a tag somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm Dan. Uh, that goes to show he's Dan. Mm -hmm. That certainly does. Oh, good evening, Nick. Have a good time there. Yeah, I think you went goth with it. I don't know. What does gothic mean? It's, is, is that an apathy or is that a dis, disinterest or both? I hate my dad. <laughs> Hate my father. <laughs> really hate him. Nice eyeliner. Did you have to borrow your girlfriend's eyeliner, or is that your uh, your eyeliner from when you were sixteen? It's my own, and it's from when I was twenty four, <laughs> and I was going through a rock and roll phase. Glamour rock, you know. Glam rock has that thing going on. What did, what did you ever think of that? Are you into glam rock? I would. Did you not, ever? I'm not really sure what that means. Is that like the? I, the, I have no idea. It's like the uh, the guys that kind of wear eyeliner and rock out and wear spandex pants and all that. I think there was a band named like Travis, and they had like really trippy videos, but they were like trying to be rockish. Mm -hmm. It's like super. I didn't, I didn't see. It. Oh, it's gonna bother me now. You can look it up while I. Uh... Guys, today we're talking about the big one: the G O D spirituality the afterlife the ever life the ever beginning the ever end we're gonna cover nips butts pps uh i think i have the wrong list we're gonna cover <laughs> again and everything in between what makes man man god god and the afterlife the afterlife we're gonna try and break it down for you we're gonna mix and match it a little bit and then uh we're gonna give you our little sit and spin mm-hmm We'll see where we end up. And I'm really curious if the name of that group was Travis. I, I'm really curious myself, nope. too. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find it, it must have been a there different name. There is a band named Travis. <laughs> but it's not them. Well, I'm going to start off the podcast with... Uh, so what's actually the name of the episode here? What are we calling this one? Oh, we're going to call it uh, God, Soul, Life, mm -hmm. Death, Ooh. and Religion. <sighs> That's good. That's good. That's a now nice we're going to do one on religion in and of itself later. Mm -hmm. Right now we're trying to touch more on the spiritual elements, the, uh, the oh. heavier ones, yeah. really. The bigger... This is kind of the heavy episode. It is. It? It's, it's the, the beefy one. I think we, I feel like we thought about this episode before we even started the podcast. I think we did. I think we've always talked about this one. We've always talked about this one. We've always talked around it, nibbled at the edges. Today, we're going to dive in. Hmm. Um, I just want to share one definition with everyone. Via Webster. She's a beautiful girl. Purpose. Noun. The reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Verb. Have as one's intention or objective. Purpose. Purpose. And that to be one of the more important words we were going to discuss today. Yeah, I mean, because purpose is going to be a running theme through a lot of what we do right now. As I sound, that's my phone. Yeah, I'm going to kick it off chronologically here. Mm -hmm. So, age of the universe, I think it stands mm -hmm. at around 13 billion years. 
and they roughly know, yeah yeah they know okay. that somehow because uh, like the orientation of all of the uh, terrest- extraterrestrial items, the uh, things floating on the, uh, around in the universe, how they mm-hmm. are moving apart, and that they were all kind of a centrally located in a big ba- big bang. So they estimate that you know that trajectory reverse tra- trajectory would force them into one spot, which would be about thirteen billion years in the past. Hmm. If I were to break down what you just said a little further, make it more laymansy terms, Ian. Yeah. The farthest we can see is roughly 13 billion light years away. No. In, oh. Okay. <laughs> we can see other planets that are moving, and by their change in position, we could judge that they're all in one spot at one point. Hmm. Roughly 13 billion years ago. How do we know? Do you know enough about microwave radiation, background radiation, to give an explanation for that? So it's it's something about like, a frequency? Yeah. A resonation? I, I think it's the direction of things moving away. But it was, I believe it began yeah. at a time where everything had to be close together because it stayed with everything and it moved away. We'll have to talk about so, this one in depth. We're, we're gonna, this is going to be a big correction on space episode <laughs> when we do space episode to talk about spiritual episode. Yeah. All the right. stuff I well, read was we'll about say, radioactive decay or radio radio decay, like isotopes. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know definitively, so that's a theory, is that 13 billion years ago, Big Bang happened and everything started, everything was moving or started moving. We don't know before that. It might be cyclic. It might be time reversal. It might be like a heat death that somehow gets magically cured by the one and only. You're getting crazy here. You're going too far because that's stuff we're going to come back to. Yeah. And another episode. What's crazy is we can all assume if science is correct, we're going to nod to science tonight. Universe is roughly 13 billion years old. Yeah, and we and have exploded out of one spotish, gone outwards, and we're all waking up, trying to figure out what's going on, who our neighbors are, why we are, and our purpose. Mm-hmm. Now, did we just always have religions and ideas about this stuff? Like, what, what's the earliest we can go back? Do you have a number or no? So I'm going to start with the origin of the Earth. Uh, Ooh, okay. In comparison to what we know is uh, factual evidence of the universe. I being didn't look this up. Four and a half bill? Yeah, four and a half bill. Point, uh, yeah. point oh I didn't four even look three this bill. up. God damn, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I was off a little bit. But yeah, that's like, pretty just good. Just pull that out of the air. Boom. Yeah, and then <laughs> the origin of the universe that we know of came from a meteorite um, that hit in hmm. Canyon Diablo. That's what it's called. It, is that the one in Mexico or no? I think it was Arizona. Yeah. Barringer. Yeah, Mexico, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. So that was the oldest known meteorite to hit the Earth, and they they can date it to be slightly older than 4.5 billion years. Okay. Uh, it's like three thirty billion, no, 30 million years older than the Earth. Okay. So 4.53-ish? Yeah, but that's everything in the vicinity of the Earth. So that's like – you could have debris that just kind of happens to hit you that – is on the same. All right, not to get crazy, uh, sciencey, but <clears throat> so there are all these clouds of dust and everything going on in the universe. Mm-hmm. A lot of rock, a lot of ice, a lot of um, raw materials, and when they start clumping together, when there's no gravity, accretion. Or, yep. Thank you, accretion disks. They start gathering together, and they get so heavy they start to spin because mm-hmm. that's a natural progression. And as they spin, they kind of flatten out and form this big cloud. So now there's this big spinning cloud in space. It's just gathering more and more dust, more and more ice, more and more rock. Starting to wrap around. in the cloud, certain spots are getting really dense and really heavy and really hot. And they're pulling in a lot of the dust. And here, pulling in a lot of dust and crazy stuff. And you're forming planets, essentially. These are solar systems being born. Mm -hmm. So they think the Earth, via all these things that are running into each other, people colliding, asteroids, meteorites, people running into each other. It's like being in a, like, a shopping mall on like uh, Black Friday. People are punching <laughs> each other. There are women who are like ripping children from their mothers and everyone's running for an Xbox 360 and it's just – it's insane. But anyway, eventually all this stuff, super hot burning, starts to cool off and we're left with the planets as they are and mm-hmm. hey, there's our Earth spinning and then oh, we got our own moon. Check that out. That's pretty cool. I like a moon. So I'm leading into this as a, a reason for why we're why we're here and a reason for why are we here? looking back as how did we become. So the people before us in an age that was much different than our own 
had no idea of all of this. They had no clue what was going on, so they reached for things that were unknown. They wanted so they had like answers. fire and rocks. That's it. That's all they had. And they were trying to figure out what was going on, why yeah. they were here. And I found this guy, uh, Frank Drake. He made an equation to determine how many planets would have life on them. And it's called Drake's Equation. So he combined all of these to, to show that there's a possibility for life. It's not to be uh, taken literally. It's more of a, a thought experiment. Is this about the Fermi paradox is tied in here? What do you use the Drake's Equation? Fermi paradox is um, how many planets should have life versus how many we find. Bingo. Okay, so what's Drake's Equation? So he takes the average rate of star formation, a uh, fraction of the, the those stars that have planets, the average number of planets that can support life, uh, yeah. planets that can support life that actually develop life, that have civilization, Obvious. intelligent life, Easy. and then the length of time they'd be alive. Mm -hmm. So And also that you can detect their existence. So there's like phew, six different things, seven different things in there? Nine, but go ahead. Yeah, so combine those all together, and I think that the low ball is that there's probably 20 different planets that have life on them, but we haven't found them yet. But again, the number is very um, 20 in what? Our universe? 20 total in the Milky Way galaxy. Really? Oh, in the Milky Way. Okay, I didn't know it was yeah. applied to our galaxy. Oh, that's pretty... That's really small in a galaxy. Yeah, and there's about, I think, over 100 billion planets in the yeah. Milky Way galaxy. So Sounds about right. Yeah. That's... The one stat I read was that you know, life itself on a planet has a one in sextillion chance, which is a sextillion yeah, is a baby. billion times a trillion. What are the chances that life will create eyeliner? <laughs> this, I really is, want to know. this is I want to know. diverging I want to know. from the, uh, the oh, only true path. Life is crazy. It just uh, comes at you from all directions. How would you feel if you saw an alien and he looked nothing like you? But he's like no wearing eyeliner? but he's wearing eyeliner. Would you immediately be like, yo, and then you yo, put on your eyeliner to try to talk to him, you're communicating. Bison. I hate my father. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Don't we all, my friend? Hmm. So this is That's this wild. begs the question of creationism. How much how much was started? What do you believe in? Did God do it? Does God still exist is he still here is he helping is he paying attention so if you're creationist do you have two choices one i believe science in the 13 billion number the earth is four and a half billion ish and god created it mm -hmm. and then you also have the creationists who are like no 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 science is wacky the earth was itself created by god as is in genesis mm -hmm. not to be confused with sega genesis <laughs> uh, shout out there was a great tweet from one of our followers uh what the famicon he said sega genesis was better better than genesis the book the <laughs> i just wanted to bring that out there. that's, a, good, that's a good one i'll tell you, give it to him <laughs> good tweet good tweet <laughs> so um you can follow him at the unpanders uh at twitter check us out <laughs> directly yep but um if you believe in the book of Genesis, I think they figured out that the earth is like 12 million years old or, or like, wait, less. It's like 400,000 years old or something ridiculous. Whatever it is, is completely off from what the estimates are from 4.5 billion. It's, <laughs> it's a little it's, different. It's, it's off by 400,000 <laughs> percent Yeah, or whatever the number might be. I have no idea. I didn't do the math. Not to laugh at your beliefs, whatever you may believe, but – Science tells us otherwise. Other people believe that God set that in motion, so maybe he set it in motion to be a creation of Earth. There you at, go. I you like know. I like that. That's a that's a cute little theory. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It sums itself up, keeps itself in science, and it still does the job. You this know? is this is what a, a person who truly believes would say is that possibility for life on Earth began when Genesis says they mm. it Earth may have existed, but it was pointless without God oh, life. good call, Genesis member. Mm. And not to be confused with Peter Gabriel's side project ah. back in the late 70s. Uh, Salisbury Hill? Sledgehammer? Mm. No, no, that's Peter Gabriel. Feel like it is. Uh, someone put me on Sledgehammer. I can picture the music video. It's like stop motion. I don't know. That's the classic that's 80s. Peter Gabriel. That's Peter Man, Gabriel. Oh, okay. I was thinking Gabriel that's as in the going. angel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, you got me. You got me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Damn it. <sighs> Sorry, we're... Thank God. I'm God. <laughs> Good to be um, contrarian. Contrarian. So 
What we can surmise is that the Earth was created. We are here. The universe does exist. Mm-hmm. I, I assume. I don't really and know. There is life, here. intelligent Super life. Religious. We think and there is intelligentish life tuning into a podcast tonight. Probably checking Discord. They're probably checking Twitch. They're probably getting down. I love it. Mm-hmm. These people. These people are really checking it out. So how did humans become? Do we even know? We do. So do you believe in evolution? I think it's, we should (laughs) science, God, who knows? Uh, Uh, uh. So let's pretend we're not in the theory of evolution. So, but we do believe the earth is four and a half billion years old. Do we think it existed for like 4.4 billion years? And then someone was like, God was like, it's time something happened. Boosh. Yeah, magic <laughs> dust like, shot humans down there, and he was like, one of the crazy theories I had from uh, a teacher in mm-hmm. a Christian school was that things like high school, yeah, uh, no, no, this is before, this is in grade school, so oh. they tried to brainwash me early. Um, she believed that dinosaur bones were put there by God to test our faith. So, like things that That's were evolutionary, a real thing. yeah. That's amazing. That's my favorite theory. Yeah. yeah. Um, they show – I've seen some pamphlets that are cartoons like drawn for children mm-hmm. and it's like a little minor guy with an archaeology hat, like the safari hat light. and he's digging. Yeah, yeah he's digging and it, it's like Welcome he's digging right at dinosaur bones. Jurassic and Park. It, and a and little <laughs> diagram next to it says, um, put there by God to test humans in their faith. And it's like, whoa, he assumed, he assumed a lot. In making a cohesive system of animal that seemed like it was alive and coincides with other rock radio dated at the exact same time, other parts of the world that looked similar. And then also had like another ecosystem thing like where flowers and plants that they could eat and then carnivores that could hunt them and buried these all assuming that we would eventually dig deep enough to find them, put it together, assume we figured it out as a test. As a test. Which is uh, God You're good. Which You're is good, completely God. possible since God includes the attribute attributes of omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, Whoa. and Whoa. omnibenevolence. So, if he knows, he can do anything. He can see everything. He can be anywhere. Free will. Hmm. Does he? Do you think he takes offense to that? If you're questioning his, he can't. He knows what's going to happen. He knows we have free will. Yeah, you're allowed to choose. I'm allowed to say, I don't know if I believe in that. Do you think he and really he knows, cares? Wait, and he knows which one we would pick. I mean, really? He, he predestines. I mean, Do you think he predestines what we choose? Do you think he sets our own fate? He has to because he, he to knows know. everything. And if we change the rules, it would change the result and he wouldn't know. Huh. Hence, he has – there is no free will. Hmm. Are you – I mean, right? I guess so. Did we just – did we either disprove free will or God? That's terrible. That's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there's free will in question of whether you're going to go to heaven like, or hell. Like 20 minutes into the episode, we just disproved God. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bad. That's not good. That's yeah. not good. This isn't going to weigh well with the uh, conservative crowd. Yeah, it's probably not. Hmm. So, so people, where do you think people began? It's, so you, if you believe in evolution, we came from a series of maybe mistakes, changes, flips, and you know bits that – fit into dna that made us into flipping in bits more here, complex anyway. more complex organisms maybe we came from monkeys like that's that's the probable <gasps> probable cause since our dna does match monkeys like 97 percent all of this all of this is called uh ambiogenesis the origin of life Ooh. so it's how does how does life become out of non-living matter or Simple, ah, organic and the complex. greatest question of all. You know, they used to try and recreate this in laboratories with the primordial soup. It was like uh, oh, some amino soup. acid, some water, some nitrogen. You got a little bit of carbon dioxide. You put it on like a glass tube and they would like shoot it with electricity because for a while they thought lightning must have brought life because it's crazy. Radiation. Adapts. Some sort of uh-huh. energy, some sort of flux maybe. A little ambiogenesis mixed in there. I don't know if you can actually watch it. I don't know how long it would take. Well, I don't think anyone's ever been able to create life, right? It's still never been done. I don't know. 
how do you how do you no make app, sure that nothing that. like once life begins how do you make sure that no life exists in whatever you have you have to test every bit of possibility of life and prove that it's not there and then start your experiment well, right? science is all about control right i mean you can figure out that your amino acid well are amino acids considered alive no right mm, I, don't I don't believe don't, so i don't know if it's a biological a protein by itself it's a building block of build it a little building block of a protein but it's not alive is that a biological uh waste though kind of it's i mean i don't know if you can I build mean, that it naturally makes well I, i'm gonna assume that the scientists know that a naturally occurring amino acid ex exists if you create an experiment that is intended to create life and you've mm -hmm. never done it is that is does that actually is a proponent for god that god maybe it exists in that moment to create that that one little change that makes it happen which I would believe, actually. I would believe Are that. Are you saying that a scientist, by creating life in a way, creates himself as God and creates a chain reaction of events that could create life that could take millions of years and never really looks back on a scientist in a lab because it can never understand the life of a scientist, the life of a lab, the life of the ingredients involved, just that it began somewhere? I'm with you on that. Is that the human lifespan is too short to start these things and, and see them through. So I don't think they ever get to full, you know, 4.5 billion years later, we finally made we don't a, a know. living cell. We don't know. We let's, don't know. Let's, we don't know. We can assume pretty well <laughs> that they haven't, but, you know, we don't know. Hmm. So all of that evolution, maybe creation, who knows. We, we found ourselves here discussing higher level planes of thought and trying to figure mm -hmm. out maybe what happened, what will happen what we are, what we're supposed to do, what we don't know, how do we explain what we don't know, all of those things. Where do you go from, you know, even struggles in your life? How do you how do you deal with struggles? How do you survive? How do you excel and how do you keep going? A lot of people rely on faith and God and theology to do that. So what you're describing is life in general is a bitch. Using those exact words, tough. Life is a bitch. Mm -hmm. No matter how you slice it, how you're born, how you live, how you die, how things happen to you, it's kind of a struggle. It's kind of a bitch. It's kind of stressful. It's kind of good. It's kind of bad. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of unexplained. It's kind of a lot of things. And to explain a lot of those things, you would push yourself towards something that is undeniable or unarguable. <laughs> Which might be God. It could be God. Could be. You can't say that, oh, God doesn't exist because really, I don't know that you could prove that he doesn't or she doesn't. No, I think <laughs> if, if it we does quote you never say song. You never say God is an it, which is weird. No, think. that is weird. I guess it always has a gender. You always assume it's like you, which is kind of a strange thing to do as well. What's crazy is that um, – uh, sometimes I say to someone, tell me all your thoughts on God, because I'm going there to meet her. Quoting a 1995 song <laughs> from Dishwalla. Oh, was I? <laughs> wait, 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 who is it from? Dishwalla? Counting Blue Is that who it's from? I think that's no, what it is. No, I have no yeah. idea. That's awesome. I just know the song. I didn't know the artist. That's, yeah. No, it's, well, it's, no, it's, it's just... typical 90s. I mean, it's pure 90s. It's, it's Watch that. You're not getting sued. Are you kidding me? <laughs> really Guys, like is getting it your girlfriend's name? No, I'm getting a telemarketing call at 10.30. Hold on. Is this your time. job interview? Hello? Hello, how are you? Wonder. This is Sarah. <laughs> I'm trying to read you about getting your free medical alert bracelet. Hold on. I want free it. Me <laughs> free medical alert bracelet. <gasps> she hung up on you. I wanted it. <laughs> Can we go off on a quick aside? Sure, hit it. I've been getting telemarketer calls. You know, they all have your area code, which I find a little creepy. Hmm. Most people ignore these calls. You'll you'll get them sooner or later. Mm -hmm. So what's wild is I used to just pick them up because I'm, you know, you don't know if it's someone from a business or an agency or someone at your work. So you're like, oh, let's go. Hello. And it's a, it's a recording and you're bummed out and you're like, everyone hangs up. I thought I had a friend, yeah. Not me. I've started digging in a little deeper. Now, when anyone calls me from a telemarketer, a recording, or something, I need to talk to a human. I want to buy their product. 
You would think that's insane, right? No, uh, but hold I bet on. you can't even get to it. Hold human. on. You can't even buy the product. So <laughs> what is the, the other point? day I got a call. Oh, I don't know. The other day I got a call. If you were a result or if you are a victim of a slip and fall and you're over 55 years of age. Yes. And you saw I, it said press one now. What do you think I did? I pressed one so hard. And it went, hold on while you're connected. And I'm thinking, oh boy, this is it. I'm good. This is my big break. It rang once, okay? At this new number, it directed to a new number, it rang. And then it went, do, do, do. The number you have reached is no longer in service. And I said, I was a victim of a <laughs> slip and fall. What are you selling if you're not selling what you're selling? Wow. The bots have taken mm-hmm. over. So I started, I started trying to buy from every bot that calls me. There's people trying to give away free security. There's people trying to give away uh, car insurance for a car I don't have anymore. They're like, do you have a uh, 1994 Lexus ES300, which I probably had when I was like 20. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By the way, it had 100,000 miles or 200,000 miles before anyone starts to brag about it. It was a beautiful car. (laughs) Beautiful car. Okay. Anyway, like when you try and buy these things, these people just say, got to go, click. And like... No one wants to sell you anything. So what are they selling? And there's one of two answers. Either they can get all my information by calling me, which I don't think is true because they can't be like, Bzz. my mom was like, they're probably stealing your information by calling stealing your you. voice, listening to your voice. <laughs> all of those voice activated passwords that we have now. <laughs> yeah. Zero. I don't, I, don't I don't have any. Um, and then I thought, or maybe a telemarketer company is getting paid on call volume and how cheap they are at their how, call volume. How much time they can keep you on the phone. Not necessarily. Uh, maybe, but maybe. maybe the other one. Think of this. Oh, we guarantee we can robocall 300,000 calls in a day for less than $900 for the whole package. And you're like, oh, my God. That's incredible. And no one else even gets close to that. But really, <laughs> they're just robocalls. They don't lead anywhere. They don't give you sales. They don't lead to anything. Yeah. It's just a call. And you'll be able to sell my product. Well, I just said not. Nah, I said thousands of calls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I okay. like it. I like it. I'm the brochure buy it. says thousands of calls, and that's the only. Yeah. Four <laughs> I words. just need calls. We're going to get our name <laughs> out there. We're going to call people. What if people want to buy it? Oof. Well, they didn't really think that through. They set up a whole system of bots to call you and then fake talk to you, and they don't even try to. That's capitalism, baby. Mm. It's a flaw in the system. Think about it. Both companies are uh, – we have the, the cheapest telemarketers. They're genius. They can call so many people and it's verified calls. <laughs> and the capitalists, the other – the telemarketers are like, it's great. We can call so many people. I just got paid <laughs> to do nothing. <laughs> so it's really a win-win, right? Win-win-win. Everyone wins. <laughs> Except me, me who's trying <laughs> to verify my slip and fall after age 55. Mm-hmm. Sorry, uh, moving back into the realm of God. Yeah. So soul. That was the next thing I was going to hit on, unless you got something else. No, that's fine. Um, I did want to say soul is one of my favorite things. The idea that humans have a soul. Okay. Where do you think that soul resides? It's clearly in this area. It's in the central area of your body. Yeah. Uh, it's, it doesn't you doesn't move from yeah. there. Can you imagine if your soul was like in your left forearm? <laughs> no, 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 no you, my soul. You, <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa! You can amputate that arm, so I know you would lose you your soul. My, nope, I still have my soul. I'm telling you because it's where, not in my left. Where would it go? Not my left. Where would it go? If you lost your arm, where would it go? I don't know. That's why it's not in the forearm. Would it go to like your your appendix? No, because you can remove that. Yeah, what about your uh, – you say you, it's, your I'm telling you it's in the middle section bladder? of your body. Kidneys maybe? Maybe spleen? No. Stomach? All those things you can remove. Do you Re- know there's an old study that said uh, when people died, they weighed 0. 0.001 grams less or something because that was the soul leaving? 21 so grams. Is, oh, you have the – Oh, is that what that, that movie's one. about? Yeah, that's exactly what that movie's about. Oh, I had no idea. I thought it was disproven, actually, because like uh, you literally poop your pants and pee everywhere. A guy called uh, McDougal. He actually tried Mm -hmm. this on a whopping number of six patients. (laughs) (laughs) And 
one of them <laughs> lost 21 grams when they died. In science, we call this a home run. <laughs> yeah, we finally got we one, guys. It. We got it. Let's run with it, folks. It's on camera. So I was kind of curious about that one. I was like, well, let's let's explain. Like, maybe he mismeasured. Okay, maybe maybe the guy actually died and did lose his soul and it weighed 21 grams. Maybe. Could have. Could have. Could have. Or it could, it could have been could've. like a maybe a fart. A fart weighs about you know <laughs> half a gram. <laughs> fart. That's awesome. An exhale can weigh like two grams. Mm. So if, if I mean, and then I fart <laughs> an exhale, if, and then yeah, uh, a, a pound is about four hundred fifty grams. Here's a real grams. question: So do you think moving blood through your body weighs different than sitting blood in your body? I almost feel like it does, but I don't know how to explain that. The only thing you could explain it with is like a, in, in in circuitry, there's like Hall effect. So if you have something flowing, you have a, a current, it creates like mm-hmm. a counter current in a, a like a, a field around you. So if you're measuring so with guess, something that, on, that would go that, against it, though, wouldn't it? It might it induce, go against gravity. It might yeah, because the current's going against gravity. No, it has nothing to do with gravity. Okay. So it's like a circular flow around the, the, the other flow. So it's a okay. constant circular field. So like if you were measuring with okay. electronics and you had some sort of, you know, field that was flowing circular around you and your electronics were uh, susceptible to that, maybe. Maybe it messes with your electronics when you, boom, you're dead and then you lose that field. I would imagine it weighs more though. Afterwards. That's what I would think. So I was like, you know, a pound weighs about okay. 450-ish grams. Okay. Um, and I was like. 468? Is that what it is? I think it is. I make that up? I think that, I think it's pretty accurate. I don't know what's going on with me. I got like two numbers similar. You're, okay. Yeah, you're pretty fantastic tonight, actually. And I was like, well, if you're if your soul weighs twenty one grams, you know, when you poop, that might be a pound or two. Or when you pee, that's probably like two or three pounds. Mm-hmm. Your soul doesn't weigh as much as what you defecate. <laughs> <laughs> uh from weighing you in heaven, yeah. soul, feces. Your feces is a little more important yeah. to us. So what is the soul then, I guess? The soul was the eyes, the stuff you see behind your eyes. Is that your soul? So I would say it's what people are it's trying to good. define. Are like what? It's the essence of life. It's the it's the spirit that you carry with you. Some people carry the spirit of on. your soul, actually. So animals have life, but they don't have soul. Like a mosquito does not have a goddamn soul. If you tell me a mosquito has a soul, I will literally log off in the middle of this episode. So Aristotle jumped into this. He said that uh, plants was, yeah. plants have a vegetative soul. It's something about reproduction and growth. And then animals have a sens- sensitive soul, so they have mobility and sensation. And then humans have a rational soul, so they can think and reflect. And the humans encompass the animals and the plants. That's deep, but it's bullshit. I, <laughs> I did kind of like that Aristotle one. That was nice. But. That's, it's, yeah, but he's looking at it from a very scientific method and delineating plants animals and humans and saying oh these are different how can i d- identify them as like who has a soul I mean, he's and bullshitting and then he's like yeah they get this one and he gets both i mean really he's like it's just up a ladder greeks and uh romans and everybody back in the day love the ladder theory where everything builds to a certain thing mm. you work your way up wouldn't it Right, right, right. And they're all related. Like, this is all the base. This is all the second part of the pyramid. Yeah. This is all the third part. This is the top level. Everyone's always about that stuff back in the day. Because, A, it involves one familiar related piece that builds to something. The top There's of no the pyramid related. is called a pyramidion or a capstone. So it's building towards the pyramidion. Fudge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, capstone, baby. That's like a keystone, capstone, except a capstone. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So there's a keystone, keystone, bottom left, or bottom right, depending on your handedness. What the hell are you talking about? I'm, I'm messing with you. The bottom, though, You're right. talking about keystone the bear? If <laughs> <Hold laughs> you went anywhere in Delaware to the University of Keystone Light is a sponsored beer. Did you guys? It's, have yeah, a we mostly. That's the cheapest beer you could buy. Wait, it's not it's next to Geneseo. No, 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 it's different for every school. No, but Most Keystone is the cheapest than, thing you could buy. Uh, no, 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 no. See, you're wrong. Most schools in Pennsylvania are home to natural light. Oh, natty. Nice. It's a natural light belt. It travels up the east coast of Pennsylvania. Um, I think in Scranton it was the drink of choice. Hmm. I have different What's slogans. What's the other? 
I don't know which one. No, I couldn't do I couldn't do slogans, but um Delaware we were Keystone Light. Why? Were you Keystone Light again? We would Keystone Light or uh Geneseo. Natty yeah. Ice. That was our three. Ice, you guys ice bearded. Wow. Well we don't we cut straight through the shit and get to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We used to so freshman year we had our RA. We'll call him Brett so he doesn't get arrested. Uh our a, RA lived across the hall from us. We were eighteen. He was 21, and he was in charge of making sure we didn't drink. Well, we'll call him Brett. We became really good friends with Brett after like a week, and he would buy us beer. Oh, fantastic. So we would buy Beast Ice uh-huh. and vodka, Papa Vodka, and mix them into one drink. Mm. Like you would top off your Beast Ice with a little Papa Vodka because you were trying to get there in a hurry. Uh, I love college. Me- College and meet your maker. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. So we've come back into meeting your maker. Ah. So, so, speaking of meeting your maker, I think one of the big things that happens with having a soul and all this other stuff is that people died. Mm-hmm. Once you were smart enough to realize you could carry on conversation, um, talk about things, remember things, you realize that some people died some things happened why and you think well, people are important they're better than animals so, uh, forget aristotle for a second i know i know well he did put people above animals so aristotle. He did. okay okay so why do they die and what what happens afterwards like are they just they're gone i mean they were important people they're uh, they're like me i'm new here i'm 20 whatever i'm ready to die <laughs> Because this is back in the day when 25 <laughs> was old. That's true. Well, did not but I'm here. I'm important. What happens to me when I'm gone? So there's a piece of you that's supposed to live on in your soul or in your spirit, some religions say. Some religions believe that you have multiple souls and that some of them are good, some of them are bad. Some of them stay with your body. Some of them leave. Some of them exist inside your body. Some of them exist outside of your body. Some of them just around you. I like that idea. That's pretty cool. You have like a spirit that just kind of is your essence. That you're born with a good or a bad or even a neutral soul. You're just supposed to live with that and yeah, exist with that's it. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's, uh, but, it's interesting. We covered this in, uh, I think it was episode 35, Pregnancy. Holy smokes. You remember the number, folks. Yeah. That's it crazy. Was, it was uh, at 14 days. You are no longer capable of becoming a twin. So that is the medical definition uh, of when you get a soul and when you cannot continue to perform medical experiments on, I guess you call it an embryo at that point? Mm-hmm. I would. Some, I don't know if there's a technical term. Experts might say other, otherwise. A yeah. human baby, some might say. So that's an interesting thing. Is like at, at that moment, at 14 days, you, you get your new soul. Brand new soul from where? Where does that come from? Ooh, it's not a combination soul, right? It's not like the DNA. It's not like it's half mom soul, half dad soul, right? Nope. No, well, the biblical stories say that it's actually from the dad. That you exist inside your dad until you are Hello, actually born. Dads. Yeah. Screw, screw the actual making of the physical body. The dad's got the soul in him, so. Dad time. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of becoming a disciplined daddy, by the way. It's like my new thing. Disciplined like, daddy? What is that? A little bit of BDSM in this household now, and I'm the daddy. That's why I dress like this now. <laughs> you're, you're the big daddy, just to clarify. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know where you go from there. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, moving on. It's the chest hair. I can't focus when the chair, chest hair. I know you can't. I can't believe well, you, I will Look at the trim I'm, on that. I got some nice man's. I have to trim the neck because when I wear a t-shirt, it like goes to here. Yeah. No, like, the, the chest hair goes up to here. Like I'm telling you, that's what I got to do. Let's go to your tongue twister for the day. Can you check this with me? Christ's chiseled chest chops. Do that with me. <laughs> Christ's chiseled chest that. chops? Chops? As yeah, see Christ's chisels ch- shite. <laughs> Christ's chiseled chest chops. Christ's chiseled chest chops. Christ's chiseled chest chops. Uh, oh, I got through it. It, was, it wasn't pretty. Folks, <laughs> yeah, I had to like I myself. <laughs> <laughs> the eyeliner. The eyeliner is ridiculous. Like 
Oh, it's somebody, so weird. if you're listening know, to the podcast great. now, you have to go to YouTube and watch this video. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> you have to stop. Just, 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 yeah. Man, check I'll it make, out. I'll make sure it's the thumbnail. It. You don't even have to click on the Can link. Can you get one of these? Oh, wait. Uh, oh, where did my drink go? Oh, my other drink. Oh. Ding. <laughs> That's the thumbnail right there. Good. Right there. Oh. Uh, so we're talking about this all coming from the dad. The song, the song, some people say it like it just exists, like it just becomes. Or it's like you have like a, you have like a pool of souls that already exist, and somehow they're generating seven point eight billion souls at the beginning of time or more. There's God like damn. I can't imagine being a soul like you're like the fiftieth billion soul. You're just like come on, like, someone please Earth make it just Earth make it a little <laughs> yeah. longer. I'm gonna be born. I'm gonna be burned. Be Wait, born. they never get they never get reused, right? That's that the, the idea. There's some that are like you get reincarnated. I don't know how like you how you switch out cool souls. Idea. There's probably like an algorithm that like okay you I can see what you number do you have and then you wait in line. I mean yeah. that makes sense. Ding. When you die, You're just like oh. <laughs> like the, the Beetlejuice, <laughs> he's yeah. waiting, and waiting, yeah. and he kills the guy's number. <laughs> he's like, Shh. Everyone, my favorite thing about that scene is that there's only like tw- ten people in that waiting room, right? <laughs> yeah. And the one guy has like thirteen. And the other guy has like four hundred ninety four million three hundred seventy four thousand three hundred twenty six. Oh, like, <laughs> where are the other people in between here? I don't know. Can you see a soul? Maybe there's a lot of souls in that room you just can't see. Could be. Could be. It could be. Could be. Mm-hmm. One of the best theories. Mm-hmm. Uh, Good. So, mon- monism is that we all come from like some place. So we like when we're born, like our soul comes from that place. And then we mm-hmm. exist, and then when we die, our soul goes back to that place. It's like the center of the universe, the beginning. It's not like it's not like heaven. This is a totally almost this scientific. Yeah, I don't know if it's scientific. It's just like no, essentially no, I mean, scientific. They say the universe. I'm just thinking like it comes from the universe. It goes here. It goes back. It goes here. If you're what if it was on another planet, it would still hold true, right? I guess it would. Go to yeah, planet, it's very go generic here. for like a central planet, area where we're right. It's like a come. universal religion. I kind of think it's cute. It I could like be, it. yeah, it could be applied to a lot of different things if they actually find out that oh, souls come from um, Uranus or something. You know, who knows? <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Love Uranus jokes. Everyone loves Uranus joke until it happens Ooh. to them. Fantastic. One of my favorite writers is Ralph Waldo Emerson. Oh yeah. Very detailed. You know? Go. <laughs> he writes a lot of goddamn stuff. I don't know if you watched any previous episodes. I had to speak like Pruitt. Prout? Proust. Proust. In Search of Lost Time. In Search of Lost Time. I think I did very good. I couldn't do Ralph Waldo Emerson. Actually, I could. Let's be honest. I still wear that. eyeliner. I could do anything. Wait. No, no, no. I just have... Um, He had a, a, a very famous poem... Essay, essay. It's an essay <clears throat> called "Self Reliance." It's one of my favorite pieces by uh, one of the people of the time that used to go off and live in nature and talk about society and mankind and science and religion. Ralph Waldo Emerson was one. Uh, who's the other guy? Oh, uh, he a did Texan guy. Yeah, he did um, against the law. Like he was living outside the law because he hated. Uh, societal means. Oh my god, he's like the big one. It's Ralph I, Waldo and him are my two faves. I want to say Wyatt Earp, but that's wrong. It's that's gonna make wrong. you trigger. It's absolutely wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know it's absolutely wrong. As an English major, I should know. Thoreau. Is it Thoreau? Thank you. Yes, it was Thoreau. Thank you. God damn. Transcendentalist. Thoreau had, um... Yes. Thank you. Holy crap. Boom. Uh, I mean, you Googled it, but still, <laughs> I credit for reading from Google. Yeah. I mean, you could have not read. That would have been terrible. Yeah. Anyway, um, Transcendentalists had one of my favorite takes on the whole thing because these guys were brainiacs, English majors, in my opinion, who would just go out into the woods and think for like 40 years at a time. Now, when you think for 40 minutes before a podcast like you come up with some great ideas (laughs) (laughs) stuff going off on my head imagine sitting outside for a day holy jesus yeah my god it's not like he was looking at his phone the whole time this guy was literally thinking about (laughs) (laughs) anyway he had my favorite quote it's in latin i was literally thinking of getting this tattooed on myself somewhere this is not a joke huh it's 
Netakisaveras. I'm not going to pronounce it right. Extra. Do you know what that means in Latin? It means do not seek for things outside of yourself. Hmm. It is essay self-reliance. And a little bit of what he surmised, I'm going to try and fast forward it to my time and my interpretation of the piece because it's one of my favorite pieces. Sure. Is that everyone's a human. You're a human. Dan over here might be a human. We're stretching most, the mostly, definition of human. Mostly human. Everyone around you is a human. Everyone who's been alive before us is a human. Everyone who will come forward is a human. We all get faced with the same decisions. Uh, we're all faced in the same life. We all face a lot of the same struggles. And so really, we're all the same thing that's copied. I'm a copy here. I'm a copy in a different life. I'm a copy in a future life. I'm a copy in a past life. It, it, we're an organism. Let's be honest, right? I'm a thing. I came to be. Other things came to be. Other things will come to be. Everything the past came to be. And we all react to our surroundings in a certain way. We like to think we're very unique but I haven't lived Dan's life. So I don't know if I would act exactly like Dan. Probably not. I haven't lived someone from the 1800s or maybe wouldn't you, that be crazy? You could be, the if person. I lived your exact, what if I lived your exact life? I was born in your life, treated exactly the same way by your parents. Everything was the same. And my genetic makeup was the same because I was born by the same parents. Mm -hmm. Do you think I would end up being exactly like you? I have no idea. I don't know. I, I want to say no, but, Maybe that's all it takes. I don't so know. you have the same environment and the same and physical genetics. makeup. Yeah. Yeah. So genetics plus environment equals the same thing. Person. So what's interesting is that <clears throat> to be human, you only have to look inside yourself. You're everything a human can be. You're everything a human could be 5,000 years ago. You're everything a human could be 5,000 years from now. You're everything human. And if you really sit in the woods and quit your job and think about it long enough, you, you can come across all these crazy thoughts that a human can think of. Hmm. That, like you are God. You are not God. You are you, – you run into these things where you've reached the limits of being a human almost. You can experience almost the whole human experience in yourself. Now, I know we're social creatures. We need to interact, but we're interacting with another us. A human is me. I'm everything human. I can't ever under, I can't ever explore my whole brain. I can't ever explore my whole physiology. So, I can't ever think everything I'm going to think. So Emerson has all, a good quote on this one. Oh, please do. So, we live in succession, in division, in parts, in particles. Meantime, within man is the soul of the whole, the wise silence, the universal beauty, to which every part and particle is equally related, the eternal one. I'm not going to cut it off there, but that's, he's talking about like being, being all the different tiny pieces and we all work as one, as a unison, as an organism. And then we're focused on like the future, the beauty of life, the meaning of life, the purpose. We're all trying to decide what's happening and how to deal best with it. But we're making it, <clears throat> which is weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does God play into that? I guess the question is, do you pray? Do you ever pray? Yeah. When? Why? Yeah, I prayed when I prayed I was going to get my job, but I don't believe in God. It was more of a, well, oh, come on, come on, please, please, please call me. <laughs> I'm serious. Like I was, no. that's praying, right? Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, early on, someone told you if you really want something, pray mm -hmm. for it because maybe in your mind it, you can will it to happen. I, I, can't, I don't. Uh, I don't uh, Thomas Aquinas said it best when he said the best argument for God was why not? So let's say there is a God, there isn't a God, right? If there is a God and you spend like 10% of your life praying to him or 10% of your life being like, hey, thumbs up, dude. And then you get eternal thanks. You get eternal life. You get eternal everything. He grants you the best afterlife in the world. It was worth it. If there's not a God and you spend a few percentage points of your life praying to him, it's not going to matter anyway. I remember this matrix. Like, there's like right, a, there's might, like four squares. Might, there's like if you if you right, if you, you believe on, and there's no God, then you don't lose out. But if you believe and there is a God, then you win. And if you believe and there, there's a God, it doesn't matter. So why not believe? It's yeah. like the mathematical right. reason to right, have right. faith. It was a logical reason to have faith. It was like why not? 
If you're wrong, you're dead. It doesn't matter. And imagine if it's the other way. Like you're like, I hate God. I'm going to give him the double middle things. And then he turns out to be real. You are you're screwed. screwed. Ooh, you picked the wrong one. It's. I remember seeing this as like a quad chart. It was literally like the most sense. logical thing you could possibly present. It was very weird. It is logical. Yeah. And I thought that's terribly wrong. Like why would you have – Faith and belief. A logical, a logical yeah. quad chart to prove God. <laughs> yeah. So hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll cut to the chase here. Do you believe in God? I believe there is a God, but you can't prove his, his existence. I'm agnostic, essentially. Which I, I've learned through the various research that I did for this episode that I don't know enough and that there are different classifications, which I've been saying, oh, I'm this, but I'm actually not. I didn't actually think that was going to be your answer. You, didn't thought, you don't think I believe in God? Yeah, I, I thought you were going to be like, no, 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 no. That's why I want to be a robot and live in a computers. So I I did say that. <laughs> I, I, thought, I know you <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think that there is a like a, a higher power of purpose, like something greater than what's going on that you can possibly conceive. Hold on, though. You would like to think... I mean, it's convenient to believe that in times that you are either like scared or frightened or you don't know what's going on. You need some support that doesn't necessarily goes, make sense. When your kid goes to the hospital, were you praying? Not really, no. I don't I don't believe that he intercedes in anything we do. So that's like a, a deist thought or like a mm-hmm. – that's, that's, that's like believing that like he created the earth and, and then it just left it. He's like, okay, I'm, I'm done here. I'm going to go build another earth uh, um, a little four billion year, light years away. So, like, maybe he did do all of that, and maybe, I mean, we don't know. The scientists understand certain things, and maybe there's an extra layer of understanding that just we don't know about yet. But maybe he does exist, but we, I don't know that he's ever done anything for me. I, I wouldn't Interesting. Know. I don't think, like, the way people always explain it, it doesn't, it's, I think it's human nature to try to fill in the gaps. And maybe they mm-hmm. use God for that, and then maybe they rely on God for that. And I don't think you need to rely on God. You just need to be like, okay, you know, it's cool, God. Thanks. High five. So, so what does God do in your universe? If I may ask, he doesn't intercede with anything. He doesn't help suffering. He doesn't help um, good things happen to you. That's all science. It's all logic. It all makes sense. But there's something <clears throat> beyond this that underlies all the physics. Is that what you're getting at? Because like, we don't know all physics. We don't know everything in the universe. True. Like quantum So stuff. you're yeah. – sure, there's like weird stuff we don't get. Is that God? Too? Yeah, things we can't and perceive. And what if we give um, physical definitions to it? Are you add on God or are you like, no, there's still more God. Like, Where do you fall on that? So we figure out quantum tunneling. We figure out ghost physics. We figure out weird stuff. We figure out that, oh, this is what's outside the Big Bang. Would you be like, okay, I'm out on – like, would you be out on God? I think it's find out what happens if we still exist after we die. Like, that's the thing. So if you have heaven or hell, like, I don't I don't necessarily think I'm going to either one. I don't know what happens. I'd like to have, like, a look back, like, a, the statistics on your life. Like, what, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? Like, some greater thing that says, you know, oh, you're good here, but you're a shit person there. Oh, you can, you can enjoy the rest of whatever life is, but I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not sure. So with, without a doubt, course. we can assume that after you die, you can't come back and tell people anything, right? Yeah, because someone would have already told us. We would have had some damn telling going on. Yeah. And I'm not going to believe that one grandma lit a candle somewhere in Mexico so like because yeah. to, to prove that she was there. Like that doesn't – I mean there seems to be more logical uses, more – I don't know, different uses, different things, more – Bigger things to bigger fish to fry than light a candle somewhere in a house and and it changes the way the world works, right? It seems very odd. Well, I guess what's your belief in God? What do you what do you think? I don't think he exists. So are you an atheist? They they know God exists. Kind of think so. I never really thought about it entirely. You're not like I... a- apath- apathyist, which doesn't even care. Okay, so I didn't have a spot for this, but um. If I were to describe my way the world kind of works and um, make physics seem metaphysical, make it sound fancy and pretty and crazy, I would say every living thing, every 
motion, every atom, every electron has a, a choice. An energy and a power and some things. Sure, but let's say they all had a choice. You know how an electron always jumps to a higher valence shell when it reaches yeah, a certain energy level. It, it always yeah. does it. It just does it, right? Yeah. We've never seen it not do it, right? Right. What if I told you that was free will still? What if I told you it could not? Hold on. But its experience of being in its own world, being alive, That's the best choice. Alive. Maybe it's like he chooses oh to do it in a fine, like yeah. a very small margin. That he's yeah. like, maybe not, maybe, and that okay, I'm deciding I deciding mean, in that little window. But I mean, it would be similar to, let's say, a human lives a hundred years, and you could you could have babies and nurture them for four years and stab them to death if you wanted. It was a little murder and death. And who would? Child. Well, I'm just saying, who would ever do that? It doesn't make sense. It's so logical it that you live that it long and then make disrespect sense. life. There's no – right. If you live – I mean I understand if you do it to random things, crazy, whatever. But if you have to nurture something and do something for so long that <clears throat> at the end you have a decision. Every day you have a decision. Do you want to do this or this? Do you think anyone just in their right mind would ever choose the opposite of a logical answer? What if that electron by transferring to a new valence shell – gets a feeling that's like 10,000 orgasms. It's like, yo, why would it, why would an electron ever choose the other? Why would it? Right? I don't know. Why You're... would it ever, ever? I'm talking so good. So everything is constantly moving in my idea of the universe to where it needs to go. I don't the know. Earth Once you get traveling. to the human level, though, things get a little random. Sometimes you have people that have psychotic I, breaks. I agree, but I'm also – I'm giving it you a human example of orgasm and feeling, whatever. But electrons don't get orgasms to my knowledge. They don't have feelings. But maybe there's something going on with an electron in its electron life that <clears throat> we'll never understand. I can't experience. But it wants to fulfill its purpose. Because we seem to be humans are the only creature with this <clears throat> ultimate power of understanding and reason. No, the other the other way around. I, I think we're cursed with this thing where we flounder. We have decisions to go left and right and right and left. Oh, who's talking? <laughs> Dina. Oh, really? She like that? <laughs> um, What's your thought? Mess me up. Mess me up, dude. <laughs> but like what if – humans are the ones that are cursed like an animal shits it has sex it eats another animal it doesn't care that's just what it does a human we're like oh my god should we do this 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 it's almost like that's our strength but it's our weakness so how does this fit into your belief of uh not existing a god not existing so go back to that i think everything's controlled by just it's natural. Everything in the world is natural. Everything in the universe is natural. It's self-contained. God didn't have to make it. It made itself. And there are reasons, laws, and explanations why everything does what everything does. So because of the, the I guess, all the precursors, <clears throat> all the experiences we've had, it's going to make us into something that necessitates what we are, is what you're saying. We're going to yeah, exist because – Why would they do important. otherwise? Why would we <clears> – So <throat> you like uh, creativity and maybe like – uh, I guess Humans, do you believe in like what I'm getting what I was getting at with animals epiphanies. and electrons and all this stuff is that they don't have the problem humans do and the humans have this need to make art and need to yes no humans are the only exception to my rule and they're not an exception so much as that's their strength weakness do you follow me wait say that again rephrase that she says you look like <clears throat> Nick Cage on a good day <laughs> um Face off or Con Air? Rock? <laughs> yeah, you look like John Travolta. I just need to say you look like John Nick Cage. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, Dina. Dina, what does it say? Oh, Dirgewood. Dirgewood. Thank you, Dina Dirgewood. Check her out on Insta. Check her socials. She's really good. The Dirgewood. Dirgewood. Dirtwood. Thank you. Thank you for checking us out. Hmm. <laughs> No, but let's say humans are the only animal plagued with 
decision, uh, overthinking, consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> everything else just knows what it's doing and does it. And so my logic applies to everything else. So you're saying that, like, it, like the human brain opens up all these possibilities, and like one of these possibilities is just that we start creating these random things that explain things that can't be explained. Overthinking, over they make. So you're thinking like God is like an overthought, things. maybe. Yes. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Still I mean, I, I like hell, like I know, but um, if we were to move transition a little bit, Alan Watts is one of my favorite philosophers. He kind of brought um, Western. Eastern, yeah, the opposite of Western, Eastern philosophy to the West. And one of my favorite things is that he says that we overthink, we overcreate, we try to control, we make signifiers, we create tags for things. We're like, well, that's this. It applies to us this way. That's a this. It applies to us this way. Aha, that's this. That's what that means to us. And in a way, we're creating a world for us when really we might have nothing to do with it. Alan Watts is like, dude, you, it, it might have nothing to do with you. What you're seeing, you can't comprehend. It has nothing to do with you. Just let it go. He says it's in, interesting that existence is spontaneous. The Chinese word zaran, that's for nature, actually translated means that which happens to itself. So really, the world is happening. Human beings are trying to label it. They're trying to control it. They're trying to do something with it. But what, ultimately, what are they doing? We all still die. We, I mean, we can impact the world as much as we want. We, we're going to die. We're going to finish. We're going to be capuzzo. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but what happens when you die, though? What do you believe in when you die? You know, your, You're done? your cells, your electrons, you go back into the earth. Primordial is... Do those cells, electrons, maybe the, some of your thoughts that live on going on another person, but I don't think they go anywhere special. Hmm. Like, think about it. This podcast might influence 40 kids to do heroin. Don't. But, like, I mean, this podcast might influence people to do something. That's my subconscious going on. It might, if a kid's young enough and listening, and be like, yeah, yeah, I like this guy. I like this guy. I'm influencing him for years to come. He might influence people in and of himself and touch people in a day-to-day -day existence. My cells might go into the earth and feed a plant. My electrons might get used to, I don't know, power something really cool. I'm pretty cool. So let's talk about like the social aspect of God. Okay. So like uh, the belief in a religion helps because it has a morality to it. It has a goal. It helps the people that probably maybe not don't have the level of thinking that help them through life. So maybe it gives them a guidance. A goal. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, what would you say to your parents? Are they religious? Yeah. Yep. One of them. Very, very... Are you like, do you try and tell them off? You're like, hmm, God's not real. Like, I don't, I don't insult them, but like as, I mean, imagine I imagine that being like, oh, going to church. God's not real. <laughs> when like, I was, what? when I was 10, I used to just run in the woods because I didn't want to get taken away by her to, to go into church? her and my mom's <laughs> church to go to church. Wait. Yeah. I'd be the heathen run, that would run into the woods, you literally. Would run into the woods instead <laughs> yeah. of to... Yes, exactly. Awesome. It's, 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 I mean, that's 100% true. Like you'd see me sprinting in the backyard into the woods. So it's like there's a, there's a weird belief system that's almost like blind faith or brainwashing or there's some sort of control element to it that I just never could get by. You know, the people that say dinosaur bones are real because God put them there, it's like, what? Like, why? Like, why would that be the test? That doesn't make sense. So there's different terms that I've never learned before that I found in this search here. So there's monolarity, monolarity, or monolatry. I don't know how to say it. So that's a belief that there are multiple gods, but yours is the best. But you'll accept that there are oh, other gods. I like that one. I like that yeah. one. I like that one. That's like a respect that's for Christians. Uh, no, actually, I think Christians don't believe the other people. I don't think they do like either. That. No, I don't. I've never been told that before. So there's like nope. a, a belief that you, you have the right one, but there's other ones that I'll be tolerant. So tolerance mm -hmm. is a thing. And then there's like a henotheism. Henotheism is that like we have, there's like, you know, a dozen different Temporary gods. Tattoo? <laughs> it's a, it's, yeah, you put it on your back and then it, <laughs> oh God, don't here, be allergic to it. Don't use the fake henna because that's going to poison mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. scar you for life. You've seen that picture, I bet. Mm. No, well, I'm going to post it somewhere so someone on our Twitter feed can see I'll it. Do it. It's pretty disgusting. 
Uh, was it a bad henna? And it's fake bad. chemicals and henna, and then it not only does it destroy your skin, it like permanently scars you. So people, so get you get the tattoo anyway, permanent, but it doesn't look. Like that. <laughs> oh, Henotheism is like believing that like you have a variety of natural gods, and they all essentially are equal. They're the same god, so you can believe <laughs> that like the god of thunder, god of lightning, god of uh, crops and water and wind, they're all they're all part of the same thing that you believe in. But it can also apply to like other religions, gods. Like if you believe that Islam or Hindu Buddha is the same as God, yeah. same as Hindu, same as all the gods. You're all, all worshiping the, the same thing. Makes sense. That's kind of the way I used to think. Yeah, I actually I like that idea. Is that you're all basically the same, except when you decide that other people should die because you believe in your one true God. <laughs> So there's a point there where religion becomes like not so great because you decide that you know the Crusades Which were a good ties thing. Ties into something you said earlier, right? What was that? Corral control. Uh, religion's the most destructive tool ever. Are we gonna get into that? I'm sorry. So I was, yeah, I was thinking about this. So there's the three main destructive things. The most destructive things is probably like bacteria and viruses, which I think is number one. Mm -hmm. There's war, which is just nations going after nations. And then there's probably religious wars, which feed into national wars as well. Yeah, yeah I was going to say uh, war is kind of... Yeah, so it might be number one so and two. So greed, so it's probably greed number one, uh, religion number two? For what? Define what your list is. Human uh, controlling uh, bad things, or like human reasons for war, or I don't human know. Human reasons for killing another person, like there jealousy, you go. Yeah, envy... Yeah, yeah. All those, like, what are the seven deadly sins? And religion seems to be, like, two or three somewhere on the list. It's up there. Yeah, no, I I would agree that, like, people kill people. People try to impose upon oh, other people I mean, because of religion. I mean, think of 9-11. Uh, they, yeah. flew, they were literally suicide bombers. Which happened in World War II, Japanese. God. I know, right. Which is an <laughs> odd thing for religion to believe in killing another person. I guess if it doesn't promote your own faith, your own beliefs... It scares you? Is your belief system is supposed to support you? I guess there's a, a utilitarian uh, form of view where killing four people, if it saves 7,000 lives, is worth it. Would you say that? Or do you not even abide by that theory? I'm not so I took a morality class. And the craziest thing is we talk about every theory of morality. Because morality doesn't always coincide with your religion. But your morality is... Would you kill an old person to save a young person? Um, if an old person was sick and dying, would you kill them? If someone's on the train track and they're a criminal and you have to run over two of them and kill them, would you do that to save one good person? Like there's all these questions that come up with morality class. So you're saying Where like the 9-11 bombers, morality? the 9-11 bombers were deciding to, to attack us because it would prevent death of their yeah. relatives greater in oh, greater yeah. numbers than a hundred percent. I think they would think they were good guys. No one ever stop does aggression. anything. No one ever does anything that crazy and kills people without thinking they're the good guy. But then on the other side, they're also believing that they're going to go to heaven and have X number of virgins and like all those people probably believe that. Or do you think that's just the story we tell to make us believe that like the religion of extremists is what caused this? Or do you think it's like really logical? Like so that guy got attacked. No, I think by... it's more logical. I think he, whoever really believed he was doing a greater good and fixing the world, I don't think he cared that much about. Do you think he really was like, I need those seventy-two virgins? <laughs> I mean, just think about it. I mean, really, would that drive anyone? Virgins are the worst. So, do you think those people were without religion that they didn't value human life at all, or do you think they valued they didn't value human life evenly? They just weighed their well, own kind higher than those or the, other. the opposite didn't they value human life equally so 100 lives here is worth 4,000 here if the, if they were to believe if they that, believe that they were going to save more than 3,000 lives in the death of the world trade center towers on their own they soil. might have they might really think they were saving millions of lives stopping america from killing so many people and being greedy and whatever i listen i'm not trying to justify it i'm saying anyone who does something that egregious or that terrible usually thinks they're the good guy like hitler he probably thought he was a good guy right thought he was stopping the jews from taking over the world and making people starve i, I have no idea i'm not hitler 
contrary to popular belief in the comment section here. <laughs> You're going to say it. Don't worry. But anyway, um, it's just everyone thinks they're the good guy, which makes me think that there must be a reward for being good. So here's the spin. Um, so your your own child, what are you going to do to try to teach them the morals that you believe? Like how do you teach somebody a whole set of morals? Do you teach them individually? Like how do you know that they're getting that kind of enforced upon them? How do you make well, sure that they a, live life in a way that you would? Here's a crazy thing. I don't know that the world will change so much that my morals become dated. So what I'm passing on is my idea of my morals. Like, what would I do if in 400 years, this is the new world? Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not the same as today. And I want my son, my daughter, my children, my whoever. I don't have them, but why have a son? Your soul's but, inside you right now, so. You, you, sure is. Just, just pray to God to tell, tell you what they got. What's weird is, so what we're talking about with our morals almost becomes the soul talk again. Yeah, it's I the passing on of your ideals, right. which is the persistence right. of you, right? Which is the complete vain 100%. way to live life is that you want you to live on, right? That's what the so whole thing is about. Immoral? Isn't that immoral in a way? I think it kind of is that you don't teach them to, to think critically, to look at things from an objective point of view. and then You think you think critically them. and from an objective point of view and you would pass that on though, right? I would try my best to make sure that people would think critically, yes. What if they hated some of the things you were doing, had done? What if your children hated technology? <laughs> and thought it was the devil. Like, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. That, that would just be bizarre. Get the hell, get the hell, you get the hell out of here. If they believed a whole different belief of, I mean, a whole different set of morals what than if I they did. thought technology kept us further and further from our They wanted human to become nature. Mennonites. They wanted to be Amish. Live out with. I mean. That would. Uh, that Transcendentalisms, right? I mean, isn't that what they were all about in a way? They lived for years in the woods just getting in touch with the human nature, the element. The There was no interruptions. There was no distractions. There was no – they literally cut to the core of what being a person was. So there – I'm going to bring in a random story here that's not so random. Okay, I'm sorry. So there was a, a Netflix special on uh, Chef's Table. So it's a series of episodes. There was one woman who was part of a family – who decided at like age 14 that she was going to become a monk. So she became a monk. So sort of, yeah, she was in Korea, uh, South Korea. She didn't change her mind at like 18, 19. No, no, no. She lived out her entire life as a monk and she became God, world damn. renowned for cooking meals based on like a, a simplistic monk's way of life. The story, it, it focuses on like the didn't end. Any money. The, that. Yeah. The end. She didn't, you know, I think it's communal money at that point. I don't know how they I live know, life, I but I know. I don't think they, so her, her father actually came back. He was concerned about her. Um, and he lived life with them for about a week to see how she was. And this is how I feel. Like I would feel like my my son or daughter – I don't have a daughter yet, but yeah. So I would feel like they maybe wasted their life doing this one thing that maybe didn't reflect 100%. like yeah. what, what my yeah. ideals were. But he found that his daughter was at peace, that she enjoyed her life. And that's all that really matters is that they're – enjoying life their happiness is ongoing so he he went and visited and like within a week after he visited he died he died they say he died happily in his sleep or whatever so like here's something crazy to think of let's say that's what you want for your kids probably right mm -hmm. build a happy life to do something they whatever <laughs> i'm saying whatever like i'm so yeah. goth <laughs> you want them to live a happy life what if your child's happy life was to live a shitty, awful job, working awful hours to raise money so that their kid can have a happy, healthy life? How would you feel about that? I would beat yourself up over yeah. not – I mean that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Is that, but, I, mean, I mean at that point you might as well become a monk. Shitty. I mean Dick, but they're doing the same thing you were doing but to a further extent to the point where it made their life awful. How crazy see. is that? What would you do? Well, I mean, you can't do anything, right? You're talking about like living on the lowest rung of classes and existing yeah. permanently. And working 70 hours a week and like shitty and just like you don't even get to raise your kid properly. Like, but you know that you're providing just enough money where they can go to any school they want. They will have enough to take care of. 
they will be super intelligent. You can have nannies take care of them. You can have their moms around. It's not like you're not around for them. So that this kind of touches on Hindu religions where you're like your future self is actually like your your progeny. It's not necessarily, mm. but you know, if you live a good life that you'll become a higher class of person. So like mm. in a way you're trying to make that your your child and your future children, their grandchildren, like have a higher life. It's the same kind of idea. So I could understand someone trying to do better. I would just feel bad for, like, if my son was in that position to try to make money and living the shittiest life possible. Like maybe, you would feel like you failed almost. I, like, I no, probably no, that's would. What I was yeah. trying to do. Even though he's like, no, 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 you did fine. I just, I'm saving all that money. I'm saving all this new money. And you're like, that's not the point of life. But that's what I did. You, no, do else. I don't know. Hmm. What else you can get? dangerous drunk in college or like so that's the one thing with religion is that there are like some absolute rules that if you were to kill somebody like the religion would say that you're evil every religion is like come on man yeah nope so like the the one thing that is a a disconnect is that the mother who 100 percent absolutely loves her child no matter what he does she always goes into a state of disbelief there's no way that my child did this like even though if it's 100 percent true we have him on film like we see there's saw. gotta be like a one in one hunch with that are like yep he probably did it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like she's like, I there, she's like oh i knew he would i knew he would there's a cigarette away yeah that son bitch let me get my hands on him you be killing she's white by the way That's you always go you always go hick southern yeah i do because <laughs> well because like you know i can't go royal you go rural like that no, nah, I can't go roll. Yeah, Hicks, <laughs> Hicks <Southern. laughs> I gotta do Hicks Southern. You know what I mean? I feel like I have relatives who are Hicks Southern, actually. In my uh my lineage, my last name. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I think that's all. I think we covered it pretty well. I don't know, man. I feel like there's I can more. talk about but there's always more. You got more? Are you gonna unload right now? No, you're oh, gonna God, drop a, the gonna weight of the me. forty souls right now? <laughs> uh, I just think there's a weird crossroads between religion, morality, spirituality, finding yourself. I, don't, I see I don't it as like that... kind of an excuse for a lot of people just to say like, oh, I believe this. So you don't question me like it relies on a power you can't even see. I have. This okay, is so it's like almost like, hey, it's a get I out of jail this. free card. And you're like, why'd you do this? And you're like, oh, check my religion. God. It's got it all written there. You check it out. Yeah. yeah. Leave me the hell alone, God. I don't disagree. Here's my thing. So um, let's say I don't believe in God. I think, I don't know, it's kind of a waste of time. Like, I, here, going to church, reading a specific gospel, kneeling at the right time, saying the right prayer at the right time, folding your hands, standing, kneeling, like all this in the right order and time is kind of a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's no every week. I don't know that God judges you on that. If he exists. Well, here's the other thing. Did if let's we say Jesus was real and he did everything they said he did. Did he ever say, You gotta do the right of the sacraments right before we bless the wine and the water to make it wine in my blood? And then right before that, we gotta read the first gospel. It's always it's an old testament one. And then you gotta read the second gospel. And then uh, before we do it, just hear me out, we gotta do the homily. Like, did Jesus ever say that? Can you imagine if he was like It's a human mm-hmm. construct? It's the interpretation exactly. of what he said. But no one – who the hell picked it? I, to me, it's, it baffles my mind. If you want to believe Jesus, that guy's cool. He's, a, he's one of the, the greatest figures who everyone loves but no one imitates. Actually, he's literally one of my favorite um, religious figures. Like he turns the other cheek. He dies to let you live. He preaches all this stuff that most Christians don't actually believe. I'm not going to get into that. That is one thing is if you Isn't leave a church and they're preaching that you should help your neighbor, shouldn't all those people just be like, what can I help you with? I want to go home and <laughs> clean your house for you. Like, isn't, it, isn't it bizarre? Like it, not to get into politics, but the conservative party, which preaches Jesus right now, is the farthest thing from Jesus, isn't it? His teachings. I mean, his teachings. I don't know. That's a, that's a complicated issue. It is. You bring and up I'm another not, episode. We should. 
all I'm saying is Jesus seems to be one of my favorites. He's kind of a badass, but people make him out to be like, like if Jesus thought um, the police were bad and they were shooting African-Americans at an alarming rate. Do you think Jesus would, he would break the law. He would have a sit out. He would do hunger strike or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? I understand. Right? Yeah. Like, it seems like his, right his MO, do. but if he, if he was in the time now. Yeah. Like he, and I'm not even, you're, you're citing, guy, but I'm so like you. the beginning of religion was the first time that they could record documents and then be able to like pass them on. So like Jesus is a figure that existed in a time where they could actually record what was happening. Like, how do right. you know that a Jesus doesn't exist now? People are like, that's a sacrilege. He might. You know, the, like the idea, right. the persona, the the way that he lives life, maybe he does exist now. Maybe those people out there maybe he does. peacefully resisting or doing the right things or they, they don't could be, be all around I us. I mean, there's so many blogs out there. How do you find the Jesus blog? I mean, honestly, how do you find the right, the, the vlog? You know what I mean? Like, ah, <laughs> oh, there really is a Jesus out there. And someone's like, oh, for real, what's his name? And they're like, I, I didn't write it down. He's really good. Look online, type in Jesus like dude, and just follow him. I don't know. It, it, there's a lot of questions to be begged, a lot of individuals to be questioned, and I don't think we know all the answers, and I think that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, thumb. The thumb and the four I, I, I understand what that move means, so it's been a good mm -hmm. time. I've enjoyed it. To round it off, uh, a lot of people are asking, this is a gilded onx. A gilded onx. And it represents life and death at the exact same time. It's called stillborn. It's dark. Wow. But, is um, that honest? Is that really what it is? Yeah, it's an upside down cross and the baby's being born, but it's dying, but it's going to heaven. Oh, and I crap. think that really symbolizes the cycle of life. It's like you live, you die, you both. So real quick, before we end the episode here, mm -hmm. what happens to like a kid who's one who dies? So this is another belief that you have to be, uh, what, baptized in order to go to heaven or some crap. It's another, sure. I, don't, I, I see those manipulations. What if he dies a day before you're baptized? What if he dies at 15 days? What if he doesn't ever makes it? Sure. Right. How about the day before the baptism? He dies on the way. That's I'm sure it's happened. That, that's a terrible thing to put on a mother. That just makes yeah. the mother feel more guilt. So honestly, like, oh, now my baby will never make it to heaven. Like, what What the hell? What kind of religion makes you believe that, like, the terrible things that are going to happen if you're a murderer or an ex-wielder, killer, or whatever? Why would you ever do that? It's not fair. It's bothering me that those aren't real signs. Yes, they were. I think I said, I speak slowly American Sign Language. Is that? I speak slowly American Sign Language. That's what. Yeah, I said it out of order. But that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a real thing, that's right? Okay. Right? Did I do it right? No. What's it? I speak slowly. I speak. I speak slowly. I said speak. I Jesus Christ! Everyone, uh, rewind no, the tape. Did it's is that over, what I did? It's over your hand. It's not over your. It has to, I thought it was over your arm. No, it's not. Are you sure? Positive. I've been watching some YouTube videos on ASL. <laughs> Are you sure this is slowly, uh -huh. not this? It's it's this. Like. I speak slowly. We'll get somebody to verify what I what I say, hmm. what you say. I'm gonna be scolded, and you will not be scolded. But that has no <laughs> that has no bearing on whether it's true or not. Yes, it is. No, it is everything. <laughs> so, um, just to round it out, too, we uh, anyone who has different beliefs, like we would totally argue with you in the comment section. Except that while we're doing our thing, we don't get to argue in the comment section. Yeah, when we go Either through what uh, what they said. Oh, geez. Is there anything of interest that we should promote, talk so, about? So exactly when you were talking about uh, – you went in deep about not being religious. Uh, Dina said, what the fuck? Hi. You look like Nick Cage on a good day. Uh, Dina. 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 I don't know what I said. Urgewood. Yeah. She said, uh, hashtag flat earth. I didn't want to bring that up. Damn, Nick. You're really onto something reincarnate i think she meant like reincarnate uh, right now nick yeah reincarnate re uh yeah. like now like i shouldn't even yeah. wait uh and then we have uh another guy come in uh what the fuck Oop, mtf w wtf what famicom mtf we don't know what it meant yeah what game is this and then i believe there's <laughs> one source not under any religion y'all y'all woke as fuck actually i changed Whoa, my mind you look like a woke 
Jake Gyllenhaal. So you got hotter as the episode went on. All right. Uh, <clears throat> and I look like I'm an, an, an asleep Jake Gyllenhaal on the Damn, sleepy side. Dude, I'm woke We're the version. We're two sides of a coin, Nick. Look at that. <sighs> just need to flip us around. Uh, Grab us with your palm. Flip us on top of each other? <laughs> yeah. Who gets oh, the yeah. head? Hmm. What's the main topic? Hello? You guys, I need help. I need to borrow some money. 50 bucks, I'll pay you back. Your friend's in trouble. God damn it. Well, um, we That's literally all. speak our mind. We kind of do our thing. If you believe differently, I really have no problem with that. If you think I'm crazy, if you think he's crazy, if you think we're full of crap, if you think the Bible says it all and that's everything, like I'm not even here to say that you're wrong. I would just mm-hmm. I would argue with you and be like, yeah, let's go toe to toe. And that's cool. You can put that in the comments. Mm-hmm. You can write to us. You can come on as a guest. Are we doing another guest episode one day? I'm trying. Um, the one thing I will say is that there's a, a mm-hmm. version of religion called uh, omniism. So an omnist believes that everyone should get respect. So like regardless of what they believe, you should be able to respect all of them. Um, mm-hmm. And then if you would like to know all of religions and take the pieces, uh, I think they call them like a cafeteria Catholic, but this one's called uh, uh, <laughs> syn- syncretism. Like you take little pieces, you accrete little pieces of, of people's religions. If you practice Sounds all bits. A little, a little bit like making a solar system, accretion disk. Yeah. If you it's want to pick and choose, there. but you mm-hmm. respect everyone. That's good. I respect them all. Yeah. I, I say try all the food and then figure out what the hell you like. Make your plate of what you want. Get a little dessert mm-hmm. after you're done. And I'll tell you what we like. We like you, folks. We like you a lot. Yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Check our socials. Uh, Do what you like. I don't know if it matters. Italian symbol for love it. Bellissimo. Fantastico. That's all I got. Good night.